We are here today to discuss the borehole geophysics case study that is presented in the ASET document. And this case study involves a Superfund site located in New Hampshire. Um, the Superfund site was undergoing active remediation of the overburden material that sat on top of granitic bedrock. And during the remediation process, they identified increasing concentrations within the bedrock system that they didn't expect to find. The increasing concentrations in the bedrock mine wells, along with the uh, development of the area with the installation of several private bedrock drinking water wells, led to, the invest to expand the investigation to understand the bedrock aquifer system. And that involves the utilization of installing monitor wells and uh, characterizing the bedrock system using borehole geophysical tools. They drilled several wells, left them as open boreholes because that's uh, actually the, the, the uh, downhole or borehole geophysical tools are most effective typically in an open borehole. And at this site, they, they used a, a suite of tools, which is typically what is done. They used a natural gamut tool, uh, acoustic and optical televiewer, uh, mechanical caliper, uh, borehole fluid uh, temperature and borehole fluid conductivity probes. And, uh, and so they, they made these measurements in, in the open borehole. And um, what these, uh, these tools do is uh, the, the granite bedrock typically uh, has a very low porosity, so it doesn't transmit water very well. So they're looking for uh, uh, fractures, open fractures that transmit groundwater. Borehole televiewer tools will identify potential fractures uh, and uh, the orientation of those fractures because the, the orientation is really uh, uh, important because depending on how that fracture is oriented, the, the, uh, the, the rock likes to transmit water in the direction of that fracture. So understanding the direction of that fracture, what we call the strike and dip of that fracture is very important. And then the next step is to say, well, does this fracture transmit water? So, uh, and that's, again, it's sort of a weight of evidence tool, right? And, and, yep. and so what we're doing is we're using the suite of tools to tease out these questions. So we use a caliper log, which is basically a tool that measures changes in the diameter of the borehole versus depth. And, and when you have, uh, you know, when a drill rig drills a hole, it's a set diameter. But sometimes if there's a fracture zone there, um, the borehole will be a little bit enlarged where there's a fracture. So as, a, as the diameter changes along the borehole, you'll see enlargements where there might be fractures. So the borehole televiewer tell, shows you a fracture. The caliper logs enlarge. Okay, I might have a fracture there. And then, and then uh, uh, if you use a, the temperature borehole temperature log and the borehole conductivity log, they may show a change in temperature and a change in borehole water conductivity. That may indicate that there's water coming in there. So that's, we use it basically to identify where a water bearing fracture might be and its orientation. And where they ended up here is, it turned out that the fractures that look like they were the hydraulically dominant fractures were oriented approximately uh, north, northeast, south, southwest. And that was pulled into the set developing the rest or update in the conceptual site model. And I think from there, once they identified these fractures, they then followed that up with uh, doing a heat pulse flow meter. So the heat pulse flow meter is a way to kind of quantify the flow within that borehole. So a heat pulse flow meter, basically, you once you've identified the fractures from the other tools, the caliper and the teller viewer, you then uh, put this heat pulse flow meter. And what it is, it's a, a heat element uh, two sensors located above and below that element. The set the heat pulse, the heat pulse flow meter at that fracture location. They turn on the heat element, which instantaneously warms the water, and then they measure the where that warm water how it migrates within that within that hole. So the sensors will identify the direction of where that water is flowing, and it will also give it a rate. So that's another tool that is used to like determine whether or not these fractures are of significance. And that then led into conducting packer tests. And the packer tests are then where you seal off a section of the borehole, you seal, you seal it off, and you collect a discrete sample from that borehole. And in this particular site, 
where they did that a couple locations, they identified some very high concentrations of contaminants that would almost suggest that the presence of Dean Apple may have migrated into the bedrock system. So when that was all completed, they then decided we need to understand the bedrock hydrogeology on a much larger scale beyond the borehole wall. And they did an aquifer pumping test. And what the aquifer pumping test identified was that the bedrock aquifer acts as an anisotropic system and that the cone of depression elongated along that primary fracture that was identified by the borehole geophysics tools. So you have this elongated cone of depression that's trending in a northeast southwest direction. This is a typical fracture bedrock system uh, as opposed to the more uh, circular cone of depression. So based on all this information that they collected, they then were able to update the conceptual site model for the bedrock aquifer. And they identified it to be a very complex system, probably not of high transmissivity. Um, and that led to them basically updating the remedial alternatives. And they evaluated other types of remedial alternatives to look at uh, how they could control or, or monitor the bedrock aquifer system, given that there's contaminants present in there. So what they did is they got a little bit more aggressive in treating the contamination within the overburden, probably the shallow bedrock. And then they also implemented institutional controls, I'm sure. And then expanded their bedrock monitoring system to take into account that preferential flow path along that major strike and dip feature.